is it established the experimental reality of gravitational waves. Mm -hmm. uh, What's interesting is it required no specialized measurement equipment no. at the time. It was just you know, what we already had, radio telescope? Yeah, it was just a radio, radio telescope, telescope and Arecibo. math. Um, 1970s, actually, is when we first got a confirmation that gravitational waves exist. Okay. It was by Taylor and Holtz. Um, actually, one of their... One of their um, plaques is on the Princeton University physics. Yeah. Uh, because he won the Nobel Prize for it. So he, they used the Arecibo radio telescope yep. in yes. Puerto Rico. Yes. So they were trying to look for pulsars. A pulsar is basically a neutron star that kind of acts like a lighthouse. Mm -hmm. It's got these jets of yes. radio light that are coming out. And it's a lighthouse in the sense that as it rotates... Right. Yes. The the part of the beam, the radio beam, is gonna just like go through the Earth. Yes. These pulsars are some of the most precise clocks ever made in the universe. Right. Because it's really hard to slow down mm. a neutron star <laughs> that's the size of several suns. That just because of the conservation of angular momentum, it's just gonna keep going. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they found a new pulsar, but this was a very weird pulsar. Okay. This pulsar was different. Okay. Okay. But the pulses would arrive three seconds too late or three seconds too early. And what they figured was this pulsar is actually rotating with another neutron star mm. that's revolving in this binary pulsar system. Got it. Okay. This became a really nice test bed for general relativity because now all of a sudden you had rotating objects that were massive, Super that nice. were accelerating, uh, right? Yes. Which means... If they're close to each other, right, three seconds in light distance, like the moon is about one and a half seconds away. So this is, imagine like it's the earth and like two, another two, two moons, moons away. Did, yes. Two stars that are like the size of the so, sun so. and more. So the point is they're very quite, they're quite close. They're quite close. Which means that according to Einstein's GR, these should be radiating gravitational waves. Mm -hmm. If they're radiating gravitational waves then they should be losing energy. And if they're losing energy, they should be falling into each other and they should be rotating faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can do all of the math. I was going to say you can do the math. You can do the math and you can figure out, according to GR, and it's a beautiful plot that they have in their paper, where it shows a line that shows the theoretical prediction and then it shows dots With of the, the experiment, experimental. Yeah. And the dots are lining up exactly to Einstein's GR Which means the, the math in the GR paper is now, which was theoretical at mm -hmm. the time, there's now an experimental observation that was verifiable. Yeah, we've been watching this pulsar for the past 40 years now. Which makes sense. And it's just, it just continues down. It's like that. the perfect experiment in the sky. Yeah. They won the Nobel Prize in 1993 for mm -hmm. this discovery. It was a very big one, right? 